Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here, friends. Today I want to dust off an old drug called lamivudine. Although lamivudine was approved more than two decades ago, it remains a key component of the first line of defense in the therapy for HIV because of its virological efficacy and ability to be partnered with other antiretroviral agents in traditional and novel combination therapies. Today we have had news that a new formulation is in place that can gradually release lamivudine in the body and thus provide extended period of efficacy with uh, less frequent dosing. In today's video, I will trace a brief history of lamivudine and explain how it works and the combinations in which it is presently used. Then I will talk about the new breakthrough that elevates lamivudine to a new level. That said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. Lamivudine is a nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor. Now that's a mouthful so I'm going to call it as NRTI going forward. So let's break down this term nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. To understand lamivudine's mechanism of action as an NRTI we have to look at the terms. The first term is nucleoside. So let's first understand the term nucleoside. Nucleosides are the building blocks of DNA and RNA, the genetic material in cells. They consist of a sugar molecule, which is basically a deoxyribose in DNA and ribose in RNA, and a nitrogenous base. NRTIs are chemically similar to natural nucleosides and can be incorporated into viral DNA during the replication process. And this is where it becomes very useful for us. Next, let us understand the term reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase is an enzyme used by retroviruses like HIV to convert their viral RNA into DNA. This process is crucial for the virus to integrate its, gen uh, to integrate its genetic material into the host cell's DNA. Now the term inhibitor. An inhibitor is a substance that hinders or prevents the activity of a specific enzyme or process. Now let's put it all together and that, ex uh, that explains how uh, lamivudine functions as a NRTI. When a HIV uh, or HBV virus uh, infects a host cell, it goes through a process of replicating its genetic material. During this process, the virus uses reverse transcriptase to convert its RNA genome into DNA. Lamivudine, being a nucleoside analog, can be mistaken by the virus for one of the natural nucleosides. It is taken up by the reverse transcriptase enzyme and incorporated into the growing viral DNA chain. Once lamivudine is incorporated into the viral DNA, it lacks a third prime group, uh, which is essential for the addition of the next nucleoside in the DNA chain. This structural difference causes the chain termination unexpectedly, preventing the virus from synthesizing the entire DNA effectively. So the DNA synthesis halts at that point of time. So now let me show you this diagram and explain the third prime concept. Now let's look at uh, this diagram here. On the right side I have got uh, lamivudine uh, structural diagram and on the left side I have got deoxycytine. Now the main difference out here is that we do not have the three prime hydroxyl uh, which is present in deoxycytine in lamivudine. So when the reverse transcriptase takes up lamivudine by mistaking it to be deoxycytidine. That's when the problem happens uh, for the reverse transcriptase function because subsequent to the addition of lamivudine, uh, the next nucle nucleotide cannot be attached there because uh, lamivudine lacks the uh, three prime hydroxyl uh, group and as a result of which the chain terminates there itself and the viral DNA cannot be synthesized and therefore it will not be incorporated into the host DNA. This is how lamivudine uh, saves uh, the cell from the viral, uh, viral DNA.
It's important to note that lamivudine is often used in uh, combination with other antiretroviral drugs to create highly active antiretroviral therapy. Uh, combining different medications with distinct mechanisms of action helps to suppress the virus more effectively and reduce the risk of drug resistance. Lamivudine as a NRTI is a valuable uh, component of such combination therapies for the management of HIV and HBV infection. When I say HBV, I'm talking about hepatitis B virus. Some common ART combination uh, that included lamivudine as one of the components, uh, but this is not the exhaustive list, but these are some of them. So I'm just going to mention some common ART combinations uh, uh, that include uh, lamivudine. And uh, for lamivudine, it's always uh, 3TC. So the first combination is TDF slash FTC slash 3TC. So that is the first one. Or ABC slash 3TC, where ABC stands for abacavir. And uh, this combination includes abacavir and another, which is also another NRTI and uh, lamivudine. Uh, which is the 3TC, which we already spoke about. Then we also have a, com a combination of uh, zirovidine slash lamivudine or AZT slash 3TC. And this combination includes uh, zirovidine, which is an NRTI, and lamivudine 3TC, which is also an NRTI. Then we have got uh, dolatigravir slash abacavir slash lamivudine, which is DTG slash ABC slash 3TC. So some of you who are taking these kind of combinations will be familiar with what I am saying. Uh, I wouldn't be able to pronounce the full names of these drugs. That's why I'm using the abbreviations. So apologies for that. Uh, this regimen combines a non-nucleoside non reverse transcriptase inhibitor or NNRTI, uh, dolatagravir DTG, with NRTIs which are ab abacavir and uh, lamivudine. Uh, there are many other combinations also. Lamivudine can also be used in combination with other classes of antiretroviral drugs, uh, which... Um, uh, as which would be like uh, protease inhibitors or integrase uh, strand transfer inhibitors, depending on the patient's individual needs and treatment history. So your physician knows all these things better. We don't have to get into all those details. Uh, and neither am I capable of um, understanding and explaining those concepts as clearly. Now coming to the main thrust of today's video. Why have we dusted off this old powerful drug and spoken about it today in detail. It's because a Johns Hopkins University chemical and uh, biomolecular engineer by the name of uh, Honggang Kui, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his uh, name right, uh, he led a research into a, a project to create a new injectable solution that self-assembles into a gel under the right conditions, and this could help manage HIV unlike any currently available methods. Kui's team demonstrated the, that in test tubes uh, simulating the conditions of plasma, the liquid portion of blood, uh, the gel quickly uh, separates into molecules of lamivudine. By injecting the gel into the backs of mice, the researchers found one injection was sufficient to maintain effectiveness and lasting drug concentration for 42 days uh, with nearly no side effects. The researchers plan to continue testing their work uh, with medications used in combination therapies uh, along with lamivudine, as most of these treatments involve a cocktail of two or more drugs uh, because lamivudine is an FDA-approved drug to treat HIV and hepatitis B. The researchers said that hydrogel uh, could, be, uh, uh, could also be helpful to manage hepatitis B. So hydrogels have uh, unique water-absorbing properties that give them a jelly-like consistency resembling biological uh, tissue. Uh, these new gels undergo self-formulation, stays close to the site of injections, and separates into molecules that can fend off the virus without the need for additional carriers or other delivery methods. The most exciting aspect of these gel filaments is that they um, consist entirely of the therapeutic uh, agent itself, and uh, QE said that uh, uh, everything originates from the same compound after injection, and this is the simplest drug formulation that could streamline the regulatory approval process once clinical effic efficacy is demonstrated. A very encouraging quote comes from Charles uh, Flexner, co-author, professor of medicine, pharmacology, and uh, molecular sciences in the John Hopkins School of Medicine, who says, this is a novel way to deliver anti-HIV meds, and this platform has the advantage that a single polymer can be programmed to deliver several different drugs simultaneously. 
one of the drawbacks of the approved injectable HIV treatment is that none have activity against hepatitis B virus, which is a common co-infection with HIV, especially in Asia and Africa. This formulation delivers uh, lamivudine, a drug active against both HIV and HBV, uh, but can also be modified to deliver uh, tenofovir, which is the current standard of care for HIV treatment. Now, let me also add that we do not know when this will be available to patients. It's very, very promising. I will follow this uh, research and bring you the latest update as and when they happen. So you guys have to stay motivated until the next video. And I know you guys are all waiting for the ultimate cure to come as soon as possible. And uh, I'm hoping to be able to deliver that news someday soon. May I also take this up opportunity to request you that you join our Patreon or our YouTube membership program to support the HIV programming in this channel. You would agree that we are the only channel on YouTube that brings you in-depth information on existing and new therapies for HIV. It will help us keep the lights on and continue bringing latest uh, information to you uh, with the help of your funding. We have a target of 100 subs or Patreons by the end of this year, and we are not doing very well as we have only got five members and three Patreons. While I'm absolutely grateful to our members and Patreons, and uh, I thank them for their support, I hope that you will join their ranks very soon as either Patreons or members and support this channel so that we can continue this pioneering work that we have started. And with your encouragement, I can keep it going. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.